Welcome back to Newsnight Update. Our guest tonight is Dr. Bruce Goldberg. He is a dentist and a, hypnothe a hypnotherapist. Uh, he's also the author of a book, Past Lives, Future Lives. Dr. Goldberg, we have some callers standing by, so why don't we go directly there and uh, ask where the first caller is calling from and a question, please. Go ahead. Hi, this is California calling. Okay. My name is California. I had a parapsychologist look into my past lives, and he referenced two that I was using now in my present. He did not do it by uh, hypnosis, however, and I'm wondering if you find that valid, and if at the same time affecting my present, do those past lives affect my future, or do I use other past lives? Well, I don't, I, I don't know what technique you're referring to. You didn't mention what he did with you. However, your past lives and your present life will affect your future life or your future probable lives as we discuss it. If you can go back into a past life and remove a block, you now affect the current life by feeling better, of course, and you then also facilitate a much more positive choice for a future lifetime. So the answer is yes. Okay, let's go to, a, to another caller. Tell, tell us where you're calling from in your question, please. Yes, I'm calling from uh, Seattle, Washington, one of the states that supported uh, Mike Dukakis for president here. Uh, sir, I wanted to ask you, since most of us aren't in, really in a position to be able to have access to uh, someone with your expertise, are there any techniques that we can do on our own that you might suggest that would help us to perhaps explore some of those avenues? Surely. Uh, first, uh, I uh, do believe in self-hypnosis, and what I do is I make uh, cassette tapes. All my patients are given a tape to help them guide themselves back into a past life, as well as forward into the future. And if you contact my office in Baltimore, I'll be happy to give you information about that. In addition is that you are not as far away as you think you are, because in January I'm going to be opening up an office in Los Angeles, so you're only a few states away. Aha. Got a little plug in there, didn't we, Doc? Okay. <laughs> Let's go to our next caller. Tell us where you're calling from in your question, please. Yes, I'm calling from Arizona, and I'd just like to ask, um, I've always had, um, I've always felt like I've had one foot on the accelerator and one foot on the brake, and um, I can't seem to get motivated to do anything, and I've always been kind of afraid of, of people, and I don't think it's psychological. I've explored that area. Do you think that this is something caused from a past life, and, you know, how do I, you know, get through this block, if it is? Well if you have the uh, if you have this self-defeating sequence is the term that I use that means that you're you're sabotaging yourself and really you're doing that psychologically when you think of it if, if there's no medical factors involved and the only other option is psychological however the odds are very strong that that is a past life problem and or a future life the use of regression therapy and or progression therapy will help you to isolate to confront process reprogram it out and to literally affect the solution to the problem. Most of the work will be done by you, not by me. Would most people uh, who approach you with, uh, with the expectation of a past life uh, expect it to be more interesting perhaps than the one they're living today? They do, but they're really disappointed in that way, Dave. In fact, one of the validity aspects of this field is that I work with some very, very high-charged people and some, I work with professional actors and sports figures and politicians and uh, I've never regressed a person to a historical figure. Most lives are very mundane, boring, but they're therapeutic. So you see, the, it, leads a, it leads a lot of credibility to the idea that it's based on reality rather than fantasy, because who's going to fantasize himself as a, an Idaho farmer in 1725? You see? Okay, I see. Let's uh, go to our next caller. Tell us where you're calling from and your question, please. North Carolina, it's a comment, not a question. Okay. I work with a psychiatrist in North Carolina who's very experienced and does regressive hypnosis. Um, with um, reincarn using reincarnation, which we find valid. Now, what I find very frightening and appalling about this, I do not think anyone should be doing regressive hypnosis unless they're a psychiatrist or a psychologist. And if I understood correctly, this gentleman is a dentist. Yes, uh, this I believe gentleman you also have a dentist. master's. Okay, I have a master's degree in counseling psychology. I mentioned I'm a member of the American Psychological Association and many other organizations. However, the problem here is that most psychiatrists and most psychologists do not want to get involved in hypnosis and definitely do not want to get involved in regressive and progressive therapy. That is the, that's a problem that supply and demand will solve. What, one of my purposes is to bring this field to its proper credible attention so that more therapists will be trained and therefore I won't be the only progression therapist in the country as I am right now. Okay. Well, that's not correct. 
Go, uh, I, we didn't understand you, Carla. Go ahead. There are many psychiatrists and psychologists that are very experienced and use regressive hypnosis who do believe in reincarnation and use explore past lives. And well, the we, ARE in Virginia Beach has 10 to 15 psychologists on their staff. Ma'am, there are, there, are there are probably 50,000 psychiatrists in this country. 10 to 15 is not a very large number. I have a lot of relationships, or cl close colleague relationships with psychologists and psychiatrists. And again, unfortunately, they're referring patients to me because they don't do it themselves. And the, the numbers of people who are trained in hypnosis and who use it, either psychiatrists or psychologists, is very, very small. And that's the problem. I, I would love to have more psychologists and psychiatrists use it. But unfortunately, they simply are not.